Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Leadership Lens, where we are committed to having the most seasoned conversations around leadership, beginning with student leadership all the way up. And today we bring you an indeed rare spectacle in this country, that is doctors in the political scene. Now, the man we have today in studio, we hope, will be joining other doctors who have made it in this country's political scenes, including Boni Kaloale and Dr. Nikal. I'll allow him to introduce himself. My name is Kwanda Mohamed Salim. I'm a fifth year medical student and uh, the outgoing, not the outgoing, the former governor faculty of health sciences. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Governor Gonda, or should we say Dr. Gonda? Dr. Gonda. <laughs> it is indeed a privilege to have you here. Just to recount how the experience has been leading the Faculty of Health Sciences here at the University of Nairobi. And so that is where we will start. Kindly paint us a picture what it is like leading that campus. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, leading the faculty, uh, it's a, it was a nice journey to me and also to my team. Because uh, personally as a leader, I didn't even start as a governor. I started uh, from a professional body, the Association of Medical Students of the University of Nairobi. Mm. I served as the sports secretary there. So even my name in the political scene, it was not, uh, it was not new because I've been there. I've been, the, I've been in the service for, for, the two, for two terms as, a, as the Amazon sports representative. And then here I was as the governor for the third time. Now, medical students, according to how we imagine it, we who are not uh, in that space, we imagine they are very busy, uh, constantly on books. When they're not on books, they are in the labs. When they're not there, they're doing ward rounds and things like that. How has it been for you being able to pull out time to do, like you've mentioned, sporting activities as well as now leadership? I feel like uh, at the end of the day, as a medical student, as much as you have this workload, as much as uh, you, you have uh, maybe the rotations, but uh, with that free time, because at the end of the day, the time we had most of the time as medical student, we are on our phones, we are somewhere. I feel like even on weekends, you can get medical student doing this great bash. So those times, for me, it's when uh, I take my time to, to, to do something extra for my sporting activity. But uh, we have, as medical student and medical doctor, we also have a life and we also have a, a, a space for us to lead people. Yeah. Okay, that's good to note. Now, quoting you from a different forum, you mentioned that challenges, uh, especially in academic issues such as missing marks, are not a problem anymore in medical school. Is that something that was achieved during your tenure? And if so, how was that achieved? You know, uh, I think medical school is uh, it's a special school in that uh, I was we don't wait until the end of the year. At the end of the year, we will get our results. Normally, how our results are processed, we say that we don't pass, we, we satisfy the board. Because at the end of the year, you don't have like, uh, how can I put it? I know in main campus, you have to pass a, a subject and then you move on to another subject. In medical school, our pass mark is 50%. Then after that, it's where, whereby the board, uh, the board uh, it has that sitting. And then after that, it's when they release. So. Normally, even uh, at some point, we don't know maybe how much we've gotten for each subject. So after the end of the year, uh, some names are published and uh, like we say that there are 250 students, they have satisfied the board. So for us, having issues of missing marks, sometimes it's quite uh, not uh, known, even not familiar to, to, to our faculty, because uh, the fact that the body, the, the, the faculty board has satisfied you as a, as, as a student, then that's all. Maybe if you, do, you are not satisfied by the board, now you go again now to see what went wrong. Maybe you have a, you have a supplementary or a retake. What are the challenges or some of the challenges that you are able to assist solve for medical students while you are in office? I feel like uh, as a leader, uh, there's a lot of academic pressure in medical school. So part of my, my agendas, and I feel like it was a challenge for, for medical students, we don't have that social life. So for me, when I entered office, most of the thing I wanted to do is making sure that, especially under sporting, sporting, sporting things, they are so vibrant. Because uh, when I entered also in second year into leadership, I felt like uh, there was a, a big disconnect and a gap between academic life and the, so, uh, and the social life. So for me, I made sure that, uh, especially in terms of social life, we have this vibrance in, in terms of social life, because you are so much into books. So number one, we came up with this, uh, we call it the UNSA Super, Super League. 
So we had our, our league, which ran from, I think, October until, uh, I feel like it was uh, two, three, two, three weeks ago is when we had the final. So medical school, in medical school, they had this expectation that every weekend there was this, uh, it was like an outing for us, because uh, every weekend we had this uh, footballing activity, which at least it made us to have the, the social aspect. And also we came with uh, these mental health uh, forums, whereby we, we engage with students to know their mental health status, because uh, having a lot of academic pressure sometimes, it uh, makes people also maybe uh, to go to go the way in terms of their mental mental status. For, for quite some time, we didn't have a, a, an entertainment place for the, for the, for the ladies. I'm, I'm very grateful, like at this moment, like I'm leaving office, and uh, I'm sure that these ladies, also, they, they, have, they have their own place for them to, to get entertained and also to, to, to be together. Now, having served uh, for that one year and having solved that particular challenge, which was your main agenda, what then do you think are some of the areas which the next government should now focus on in medical school? People have this notion that medical school, medical students don't have this time, they don't have a free time. So we also started uh, events like uh, the, the other time we hosted uh, the talent search and we found that, uh, wow, medical school, we have a lot of people with big talents, not only in terms of sporting, like we had, like uh, the last event that we had, the talent search, we found that we had brilliant people who can really dance, people who can sing. So I feel like uh, for the next government, they have a big, big uh, shoe to fill in terms of that, uh, to, to identify the talent that people have and also to, to make sure that they really pamper them and make sure that at least for, for there, we get people who can really also progress in terms of not only into medical school, but also the, their talent that they have. We are, we are privileged to be having this interview uh, after your attempt at the presidential seat now of UNSA. Mm -hmm. Kindly share with us first of all, what is it that gave you the confidence to be able to um, target a seat that we have not seen medical students uh, take a go at in previous years? The, the main motivation is the people who are really pushing me and also the support I got from my medical family and also other, other colleges and faculty heads. And also to me, I felt like it was high time that people see that despite being a medical student, being a medical doctor, you have a life and also you can also serve people. The notion that medical students are busy 24-7, I think it's just a, a notion. And uh, we have, even at, uh, at the country level, at, as leadership, we have uh, like the likes of uh, Dr. Boni Halwale. These are leaders who, they, have, they are doctors also. And uh, they decided that apart from being a doctor, they can also give another service. And uh, I feel like being a medical doctor, you have, uh, you have this touch of leadership that is different from other people because you are a doctor. So most of the time you see this patient. So most of the time you, you treat your people as also patient because you have this care to them. So I feel like at this moment at the university, at the university level, we needed that touch of uh, being so, I think, compassion to, your, to, your, to, your, to the people you serve and also to give them that the doctor leadership into people. That was my biggest motivation. All right. We hope one, one time in the future we'll be able to experience uh, the touch of a doctor in the political uh, scenes in this country. Now, uh, having done that, what do you think is the most difficult part of that kind of a pursuit from your experience? The most, Im most challenging part is uh, is the balance because mm -hmm. uh, what I can say personally apart from the leadership because uh, I'm a person whom uh, I think uh, I'm having a lot in at, on my table but at the end of the day I try to stack the balance and uh, I, ha I I didn't have uh, what can I say I didn't have uh, quite a rough time because uh, Gonda I'm Gonda as a leader I'm Gonda as a medical student I'm Gonda as a sportsman and I'm also Gonda as a businessman because even in medical school there, they know I have my own line. I have my, my company called Masters Medics. I normally supply medical equipment. So striking the balance is why it sometimes is quite challenging. At some point, I needed to, be, to drop my business uh, things to, to be more of a servant leader and more of a doctor and a sportsman. So it is quite challenging, but thank God I have that balance that uh, is not for everyone. What are some of the lessons that you have been able to take out of 
that experience because much as uh, we did not have the privilege of having you as president i believe that that experience is is invaluable and has not been wasted so share that with us there was a point where i was telling people whatever i felt i can achieve and whatever i can't i was very honest and most of the guys were like gonda you are a leader and you are not a politician and i feel uh, maybe people want these politicians because people sometimes people need to be told things that they want to hear but i want to tell you something that i can do so at some point i feel like uh, maybe whatever i whatever people wanted to hear i didn't i was not telling them and maybe some people maybe i i didn't i end up not enticing some delegates because they wanted to hear things that i i thought that they were beyond my capabilities so as i want to promise you something that is practical something that i can do and something that i have done before and i think that it can be done but uh, most of the people i feel like they need uh, some uh, i don't know i feel like they need something that even it's beyond your capabilities so for me i had i have this principle in me i'm someone who when i say something i say something that i mean it and something that i can do if i can't i can't do that and also another aspect i feel like uh, to some point maybe even in leadership you need this political touch with other guys like uh, my, in, under my presidential uh, uh, my presidential race i didn't involve anyone that is maybe politically inclined to me and i feel like maybe it was a setback to me because uh, people also want to see who 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 is uh, behind you who is pushing you. but at some point i feel like i'm i'm the one and i really i'm going for it and uh, to that extent i feel like people feel bonda you are just you're just you're just a leader so you're not a, a politician and the other thing there were some people who were willing to support me but uh, i didn't accept their their support because uh, personally i have my own ideology and principle if my own ideology and principle does not match with you i don't normally don't take any support from you so maybe that could also have played a part in mm-hmm. my in my presidential failure so would you say that in your perspective that this uh institution in terms of the student fraternity and probably even the country is not ready for the model of leadership that you you are attempting to sell to the people uh, given the outcome of the election to some extent i can say yes because uh, even having this conversation with, the, with most of these delegates most of the delegates i feel like uh, that this is from from my experience apart from selling your agendas apart from your integrity accountability and transparency principles you have but they have uh, this other aspect which they were really keen on like how much are you offering to them so for me i was not there for i, I don't believe in money money oriented leadership if you can buy my agendas then well if maybe my agendas need to have a touch of money then i feel like i was not willing and I was not even ready for that. Another aspect that had come up uh, in the course of that race was issues of gender uh, and how receptive the electorate is to candidates of both genders. How do you feel about leadership and gender being a factor? I really believe in women empowerment and women leadership because uh, at this point also we need the women into this space of leadership and uh, I believe that despite uh, being uh, supporting this uh, initiative of uh, women into leadership and to power i also believe that, that as a leader leader t- leadership uh, is something that is from god because even from the people i served with and people who have been working for my presidential aspirant i feel like those ladies were quite something and they they have been into leadership and the leadership that they had it was commendable that's why i picked them and it's not about gender per se but uh, as much as you are a lady and you are into leadership that means you you have your own unique style that you have that's encouraging to hear and we do look forward to a time when we will have more of discussions around agenda rather than gender uh, but the future is indeed bright now while talking about the future what then does the future hold for you uh, politically what are you uh, giving yourself to now that you've taken a break or so we assume uh, from active politics leadership is action it is not position so for me saying that i'm i'm off leadership for the for the meantime i think no because uh, at the meantime i'm also working and we have our kenya medical association i work as uh, under young doctors network so still i may not be into university leadership but outside there i'm still working under the secretariat of young doctors network mm-hmm. and uh, to me i feel like 
maybe even through this journey, I've realized myself, I'm not a political guy, I'm a leader. In, uh, in leadership or in politics, you never say never. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm still open and I'm still uh, assessing my ground. And, uh, but uh, in the near future, maybe, see Gonda in the professional leadership also there. To, to uh, step back a bit, having talked about uh, the achievements of your government under the faculty, are there any projects that you intend to hand over or that you, you would love to see continue uh, now that you will be out of office? Before, even in medical school, we didn't have this vibrance in terms of sport, sporting, sporting activities. Like uh, what I came with, I came with, uh, with a project whereby in medical school, we don't have a field, we don't have any sporting facility. So what we, we requested and what we, we acted upon we have our, our, our neighboring faculty, that is uh, Kenya Science Campus. We wrote to the administration to make sure that every Tuesdays and Thursday, we are being transported our students to Kenya Science to, to do these games. So it has been a culture and a norm since we entered the office. And uh, I'm pleading even to the next uh, government and I'm also hoping that this culture is there so that our medical school, at least the vibrancy that I as a leader left in terms of uh, sporting activities, to be there. Is there anything you would have done differently if, say, you were given another chance to lead medical school? In terms of administration, the, the bureaucracy part, because uh, at some point we, we had some challenges in terms of our daily activities like uh, accommodation and transport. So what maybe you could have done better is that knowing that the bureaucracy really takes a, a bigger time and a much longer time, maybe you could have engaged the, the administration Quite earlier. Now at this juncture, you can give us a parting shot, especially for the members of your faculty who you have had the honor of leading for the last one year. So to my faculty, I say, I can say I highly appreciate for the opportunity that you gave. We trusted Gonda and his team to serve you. We tried our best. Maybe we, at some point, we missed some one or two things, but uh, that is uh, human nature. You can't get anything, everything, everything uh, we did, we did at, uh, we are having Comrade's interest at heart and we feel like we did our best. Maybe if there is anything that we missed, we hope that the incoming government will try its best also to serve you better. To the University of Nairobi at large, thank you for giving me this platform to, to be the presidential aspirant in the outgoing elections. And I did my best to, to give out my manifesto also to, to show that uh, also medical doctors and medical students can also have this uh, opportunity also to serve you guys. But uh, I am really hopeful to the incoming government, hopeful that also under the council level, that they'll try their best to have that comrades interest at heart. To me, I say that uh, leadership is action, it's not position. So wherever I am, as a, as a, as a student or as a comrade, I'll also try my best under my own capabilities to help and assist comrades in any way or in any situation that I can. That is Gonda, and I really appreciate for giving me this opportunity. And also to the media, thank you. And much appreciation. Thank you so much for those sentiments. We've been glad to have you. And now to the last segment, which we do not exempt anyone from. We remember quite well you dared us during the debate that if we had a ball, then you'd show us some moves. Today we were prepared. So you'll show us what you've got. Here we are. You can take it away. Indeed, it's never a dull moment for us here at the Leadership Lens. Thank you so much, uh, Daktari, for the Kupepeta. We have enjoyed that. And so that has been Dr. Popularly known as Dia Bigonda uh, here on the Leadership Lens, sharing with us his experience both as governor and as a presidential aspirant uh, of the UNSA uh, seat here at the University of Nairobi. He argues that the world may not be ready for the model of leadership that he sells, but a time will come and the future is indeed bright. Thank you for staying with us up to this point. I have been your host, Emma Jaber. Until next time, so long. <laughs>